So I started my career in the U.S. Navy as a submariner, um, working on navigation electronics, interior communications, navigate submarine through the Panama Canal, which is a highlight. From there, use the GI Bill to go back to school and uh, study engineering. It was in the Navy that I really developed an understanding and appreciation for engineering. Um, you know, as submarines get deeper underwater, you hear things creak and pop and doors need to stay open so they don't blow out of the frame. And that got me really interested in you know, just the materials aspect of, you know, ship design. So I went back to school, studied materials, and then um, one thing led to another, and I found myself at SpaceX designing uh, rocket engine valves and components for the Merlin 1D engine. And then later uh, on the additive manufacturing team for the, you know, just developing new technologies to print um, large format additive parts for the Raptor engine program. The first additive manufacturing part that flew in space was my design. And it was one of those things that I pushed through the chain to replace castings. We were getting castings that were really poor quality and we leveraged uh, new technology to really bring that to the forefront and give SpaceX more flexibility and more design control over the entire process. The first additive part in space was um, a rocket engine check valve. So it was roughly, you know, five inches in diameter, about uh, nine inches long. With the quantities that SpaceX uh, was manufacturing their, their valves, um, we didn't have uh, not only the quantities, but also the design maturity was not at a point where um, we were in a position to invest, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into um, permanent tooling. Uh, once, you, once you take that jump, uh, you're locked into that design. With additive manufacturing, uh, we realized, okay, if we wanted to add a uh, temperature pad or a sensor port or something along those lines, um, it was very easy to do. It's often, you know, uh, two weeks from, you know, the design popping into your head to you holding the part in your hand. And I think that overall, um, you know, production continuum is, is really the, the heart and soul of additive manufacturing. It allows you to be more, um, more reactive in a shorter period of time. So if you notice that, um, you know, the situation demands for, uh, you know, any sort of uh, design change. You're not waiting months and spending tens of thousands of dollars. It's instant. It's whatever you can imagine in, uh, in your CAD design, you can essentially make reality. I met Neil at a DMG Mori user conference for uh, additive manufacturing. And, you know, I was just kind of pulled to uh, you know, just discussing additive in, in the Southern Hemisphere in general, uh, you know, Australian wife, etc. Um, and I was sort of captivated by um, just the breadth of technical knowledge that he had in, in so many different industries, whether it's injection molding, biomedical, um, to the investment in additive. And I think I saw that and recognized it. And then uh, when the opportunity came up to come down here and, and chat with Alan and Neil about a position, uh, took it immediately. and really enjoyed um, you know meeting everyone at Romar far and away the strongest asset Romar has is the people so um, I'm just really excited to be part of such a strong team obviously Alan and Neil Carlo and the entire design team out of all the engineering teams I've worked on you know I can say that Romar is up there with the best and it's their um, it's their practical approach to complex problems that really puts them head and shoulders above I've gone from parts that are a figment of your imagination that you dream up one morning in the shower to holding them in my hands, you know, several weeks later, design analysis, using, you know, large data sets to influence further uh, design. Really, again, that combination of practical experience and, and just common sense to hard technical problems. And whether it's, uh, it's on the front end with design or on the tail end with manufacturing. I've, I've kind of covered the entire spectrum. Everything from gathering design requirements through material selection, uh, manufacturing process selection, to validating these processes and then bringing them to production. Um, you know, I've had my fingertips in all of those, um, you know, in, in a very high paced, uh, mission critical environment. And that's something I really am um, looking forward to sharing with the Romar uh, team and then really pushing us to succeed in the future.